was living um, in the United States and the last film that I had made was uh, Sweet Charity. And these two, uh, well, producer and director, who later on I found out were neither producer nor director. Actually, one was a uh, scenographer and the other one had just decided he wanted to become a producer. He actually was a gun runner. <laughs> I found that out later. <laughs> Selling guns, made a lot of money. and. Uh, came to America and was looking for the actress for their first film. And they came to my agency uh, at the time, it was Paul Conner, and uh, on the desk was uh, Hollywood Variety, the magazine, that uh, film magazine, with my picture on the cover, because it was announcing uh, that Sweet Charity was coming out, the film with Shirley MacLaine and Ricardo Montalban. Um, and they just walked in, they saw it, and I said, oh, she's perfect, we want her. All right, so my agent calls me in New York and says, you know, I have these two Italians who are coming and they want to see you because they, they want to offer you a film. The first thing that they asked me was, would I make my hair black and change my name? I said, you come to America, you want an American actress, you're asking a blonde to become black and you're asking her to change her name. I mean, it just makes no sense whatsoever. Stay in Italy, get yourself a dark haired Italian, uh, whatever name you want. No, 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 we want you. I said, well, I'm not changing my hair nor my name. Maximum I'll put on a wig. And that was called Colpo Rovente with Carmelo Bene whom I found out later on. I never worked with him, actually, but I found out later on that he, he is actually a quite, quite a good actor, mainly theater actor. At the time, uh, living in New York, um, actually, wasn't the greatest, I have to say, and I was not happy. I, uh, it could have been Mickey Mouse. I would have gone to Italy, because I love traveling. I've never been to Italy. So basically, that was all I really wanted, go to Italy, for a reason, because I really don't like traveling alone. And that was a reason, okay. So I arrived in uh, Rome, and the producer picked me up, went to dinner, and he said, you know, I, I'm your Carla Ponte, and you're my Sophia Lauren. And I said, no, that's not how it works. Uh, he sort of had his own thing in his head, I think, of what he wanted out of the film business. <laughs> and the first day I came to the set in Cinecitta, that was an experience. Practically coming from a Hollywood soundstage where you can hear a pin falling, I ended up in this big stage, not soundstage, stage, where I could hear airplanes where I could hear the workers calling to each other what they're going to have for lunch. Uh, hand me the hammer and, uh, you know, what, what about this and what about that? And my mind just kept going. I said, I can't, I can't, I can't remember anything with everybody talking. And that's when they said, don't worry about it. You don't really have to memorize anything. You just, if you can't remember, you just count. I said, what do you mean count? Because you're going to be dubbed afterwards. So, you know, if the, if the scene is, I think I'm coming home, you just say, one, two, three, four, five. That's the same time space. And we'll dub you. Uh, oh, it's much too difficult to explain. Anyway, um, after that, I, um, I was called to the Cannes Film Festival. And um, there I met um, Omar Sharif, and um, well, we hooked up, let's put it that way. <laughs> and uh, actually he said, you know, when we go to Paris, uh, I want you to fix up the apartment. And, uh, but remember, no paintings and no objects on the wall or on the furniture. I said, I'm, I'm not doing well with hospitals. I love things on the wall. I love paintings and objects and all of that. 
So that was the end of our relationship. And at the same time, I was asked by a man who said, are you Barbara Boucher? I said, yes, and my name is Carlo Ponti. I said, oh, here he is, the real one. <laughs> and he says, well, I'd like for you to come to the villa tomorrow. I have to talk to you. Well, I thought, Sophia Loren is the president of the festival, so I guess I'm safe. And I went to the villa. Uh, the president of the festival was not there. And he said to me, um, what is your body like? I said, fine, thank you. <laughs> it kind of stumped him. And he says, well, I suppose it will have to be the, uh, the director to decide. I said, yeah. So who's the director? Uh, Michelangelo Antonioni. I had to look him up because I really didn't know who he was. And I had to fly to London to meet this director. I remember it was a rainy day and when he opened the door we sat in this bay window with all the rain outside. And I said, um, can I know what brought you to, you know, want me for your film? What is the film about? What is the part about? And all of that. And he just said, I am very tired right now. I don't want to talk about it. Ah, oh, I said, okay, don't want to talk about it. It so happens that on the plane going to London, I ran into a gentleman who asked me to read some pages uh, of the film that he's about to produce. And I said, well, actually, I'm going already to see somebody else. Well, I called that gentleman the minute I got out of the apartment of Mr. Michelangelo, since he was too tired to tell me what he wanted. And uh, I called the man and I said, I'm ready. And that was Charlie Feldman, producer of Casino Royale. And uh, that's how I ended up doing Casino Royale. My agent didn't believe me. My agent said, yes, you and another 3,000 ladies are being tested. I said, I'm not even going to test. I got the part. He says, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did. Well, he didn't believe me. I called the agent in New York. I said, would you do the contract, please? Okay, fine. And I came to London to work for a year and a half to do Casino Royale. My director was Val Guest. And uh, it was a mega production, I have to say, a mega production. Quite exciting. Building a lot of sets, tearing a lot of sets down, working with a lot of interesting people. I'm the most interesting person, I have to say, until now that I have met and worked with, it was David Niven. Anytime they ask me, who is the actor that you adored most? David Niven. Fabulous human being, great actor, great companion work. And, uh, well, after that, um, in Italy, the films just came rolling in. 72, I think I did eight. Finished on Friday, start on Monday. The parts I, you know, not speaking Italian, someone else had to read the script for me and describe it to me. Then afterwards, I knew I could just count because it'll do my voice. <laughs> so it was never hard. Seems more and more likely every day. What? That I'll fall in love with you? I ended up doing all the, the comedies. Uh, I guess at the time I was considered sort of different from how the Italians uh, were used to because I, I was without too much inhibition. So I ended up just working and working and working and working and working and working and just never ended forever, forever and forever. And I said, who's going back to Hollywood? This is my Hollywood. I'm going to stay here. Of course, after the comedies, I wanted to do other things as well, and that's when I, I, 
I did the films with Fernando de Leo, uh, Milano Caliber 9, uh, Don't Torture the Duckling. I'd say I, I had a great career in Italy. The only one I haven't done is a Western. Missing that one, but this time. <laughs> You know, I have to tell you that I'm a, I'm a self-taught actress. I didn't go to school. And um, directors, nine out of ten, just sort of let me go and uh, do it on my own of what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I always think that films are films. They're not reality. They're taken from reality, and sometimes they, reality is even worse than, than, than the films. But I have always been a person that, you know, when I'm working, I'm working. I'm not, look, I, I'm not one of those cerebral actresses that, oh no, I can't do that because, you know, this is against, uh, this or that, whatever. I don't get into that. I read the script. I see if it's something that me stutziger. I don't know what it's called in it in English. It sort of turns me on that you know I'd like to play that kind of a person. You know, actors basically the idea that they're playing all different types of people. That's the exciting part. I have no memory of any of my films coming out. I do them and don't look at them. That's sort of been me. I kind of work. I'm like a working bee that, you know, working, working, working. And once it's done, it's done. It's out of the way. I don't have a lot of memory of a lot of things that I did do. I'm surprised at myself and many times. And I, I've, I've had to see films of mine because when I would go to film festivals or something, they would show it to me. And that would be more or less the only time I see them. And I did see one film, and I'm still trying to figure out how I can't remember having done that film, because they stuck my face into an open-cut pig, which I'm sure it was awful. But I can't remember. Something about my my head that kind of does things and pushes them aside and on for it, forward to the next. In a way, it kind of saves my sanity, I think, because I do that with everything in life. When um, the, they called me to come to the Venice Film Festival, which I had never been invited to because my films are considered B-movies, you know, and they're very snob. <laughs> and they said, well, you know, Mr. Tarantino said he would come if you come. I said, yeah, sure. What do I have to do with Tarantino? I've never even seen one of his films. I don't like blood. I don't like splatter and all of that. And I know he's considered a big director, but uh, I can't see why I would be part of his so they sent me an interview that they did in Los Angeles and where he said and about him being a lover of Italian films and, and he said, and the one star of most of these films that I just adore is Barbara Boucher. And I said, wow, that's a twist. <laughs> so anyway, I have to say I got my great satisfaction when I went to the festival. I arrived there, I went around the bar, he was standing over here, he's very tall. So he was standing over here and I said, well, I'm going to do the big turn, just walk through the crowd and everybody. People that had never said hello to me because they were snobs, all of a sudden, hi Barbara, how are you? Ciao Barbara, come stai? Oh, c'est bellissima, madame. I said, uh-huh, <laughs> look at this now. So I finally walked up to him and I said, 
Hello, I'm Barbara Boucher. I understand you're a big fan of mine. And he looked at me and he goes, yeah, <laughs> like a little kid. And after that, we went to the screening of Milano Caliber Nove. And we sat there and he was sitting next to me and he kept going. Oh, can't believe it. I've got you up there and I've got you right here as well. This is just the greatest day of my life. I thought, wow. I mean, you know, it, it was mind boggling for me, <laughs> for this person here to talk like that. And so uh, at the time, he, uh, his big question was the dance scene, the dance scene. He loved that dance scene. And he's repeated it, obviously, other times. And would say, well, did you have a choreographer or, or, or how was it set up? I said, no, they put on the music and I just moved, that's all. You sure? I said, yeah. Oh, God. I don't know what I'm going to do with her. I won't name her, do her name right now, who we was thinking of anyway. And, um, well, anyway, it's been a relationship that's lasted for years and years and years and years and always says, we're going to do a film together, we're going to do a film together. I'm, I, I told him, I'm getting old, you know. Eh, pretty soon you're going to have to have a, a part for an old lady. So you better hurry up. Yeah, 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 honey, I'll get there, I'll get there. I said, okay, I'm here. He does have his problems with punctuality, I have to say. But I suppose great artists, uh, they all have something. Otherwise, they won't be great artists. That's what they say, at least. I'm not convinced. The first time I was called to do a, a, a festival for these type of things of where people gather and, uh, and uh, see films and um, and autograph signing. I, it was in America. They called me to go to the United States and I said to him, well, what am I going to do over there? They don't know who I am. And I said, what do you mean they don't know who you are? All your films are cult movies. I said, they are? Well, so when I went for the first time and they said, bring your photographs to sign, I, of course, brought the best colored photographs I had. And the first thing they did was say, no, those don't work. So what do you mean they don't work? Well, your fans want black and white, 8 by 10s possible glossy, and from that period. I said, my gosh, what are they going to say when they see me now? And those pictures when I was like in my 20s, the guy was very nice. He said, they don't even see you. They're only looking at the pictures <laughs> and remembering your films. Ah, okay. So I remember they got me the pictures because I didn't even have any of those. And then a line, they were in line, and, you know, they would stand in front of me and say, Oh, God, I remember you were wearing a black and white dress and your hair was this way and your shoes were that and you said such. I looked at these people and I said, my God, you must have seen that film a lot of times. I can't remember all of that. And that is the first time I saw that there's a whole world out there of film fans of my old films, of my films. And it was amazing. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I, was, I thought I was down to only Italy and not even going outside of it, like Germany or France or whatever. Later on, you know, I realized that someone calls me from Brazil and says, oh, I just walked into a bar and uh, there's a big poster of you. In Brazil? Yeah. I have to say, it's nice to come to these places and meet these people who uh, are so enthusiastic about these films.
even so they consider them B-movies. But they live on.